What's it really like to drive on the Autobahn in Germany? Are Americans loud and annoying? And why I think that Americans should be less polite sometimes? I'm answering those questions and more now. Hello, servus, and welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Felicia. I'm originally from Munich, Germany, but have been living in Cincinnati, Ohio, off and on since 2016. So before I start, I'd like to say welcome to all new subscribers and viewers on my channel, because YouTube featured me as creator on the rise yesterday, which was a huge honor for me. So thank you, YouTube. And a lot of new people found my channel that way. So welcome to all of you. And we also cracked the 30,000 subscribers mark yesterday, which is crazy, especially since I just celebrated 20,000 subscribers a couple weeks ago. So a big thank you for that as well, especially to all of my longtime subscribers for all of your support. So for my 20,000 subscribers special, I did a Q&A where I answered a few more personal questions, but I actually haven't done just a normal Ask a German Q&A in a while. So I thought it's about time to do one of those again, where I just answer your questions that you've always wanted to ask a German German, like anything about culture differences or about the German people or Germany as a country or whatever you want to know. So I've picked some questions from the YouTube comments and from Instagram and I actually ended up picking way too many because there were just so many interesting questions. So I kind of organized them thematically and some of them I just put aside for now and I'm going to answer them in another Q&A video next week instead. And if you have a question too that you'd like for me to answer, make sure to leave a comment below and add the hashtag ask a German so that I can also find the question and maybe I'll answer it in the next Q&A video. So let's get started. What is your favorite season in Cincinnati? Okay, that's a nice and light question to start with. So I think my favorite season in Cincinnati is fall because there's always a lot going on here in the fall with football season and Halloween and so on. And also the weather is usually really nice until like October. It's sometimes still in the 90s in October, which is something that I really love coming from Germany. Do Americans seem loud and annoying to you? Um, to me, I'd say no. I mean, there's always annoying people, but for me, that's not really connected to where a person is from. But I'm assuming that this question was supposed to be about what Germans think about this in general. And I have to admit that it's actually a thing that when Americans visit Germany, and let's say there's a group of American tourists on the subway, it is likely that they're going to be the loudest people on the whole car. I've experienced that a few times in Germany and it's mostly because Americans do tend to talk more loudly than Germans. Germans are usually pretty unobtrusive and subtle when they're out in public. We don't really like to attract a lot of attention and German parents too often tell their kids to talk more quietly when they're on public transportation or in a restaurant or something like that. So because Germans tend to be rather quiet in everyday life, Americans do sometimes come off as loud when they're in Germany. And yes, there's also a cliche that Americans can be annoying, but not all Germans think that, it really depends on the person. Some Germans just can't stand small talk, for example, so they'll find it really annoying when an American tries to make small talk with them. And since Germans overall are pretty straightforward and value honesty a lot, some Germans may think that when Americans are trying to be nice, maybe overly nice, giving a lot of compliments, etc., that they're being fake and superficial and they may be annoyed by that. So that definitely can happen, but again, it definitely depends on the person you're talking to. And for me personally, I think that there are just as many annoying Americans as there are annoying Germans. What are the major differences between the American and German education system and how are teachers treated? Do you think they're respected more or about the same? So there are pretty big differences between the education systems, but I think I'm just going to make a separate video about that sometime because it's definitely interesting, but it's also a lot to explain and too much to do in this Q&A video. But one of the main differences is that in Germany, after fourth grade, students are being separated and attend one of three different type of schools, one of three different levels. The lowest one, Mittelschule, ends after ninth grade, the middle one, Realschule, ends after 10th grade, 
and the highest one, Gymnasium, ends after 12th or 13th grade, depending on the state within Germany. So there is a lot of pressure for kids at a young age to perform well at school because after they're being divided, it's not very easy to switch between the three different types of schools. It's possible, but definitely challenging. And only with a diploma from the highest school, Gymnasium, and the diploma is called Abitur, you're eligible to enroll at a university later. Regarding the question about the respect for teachers, that's really hard to say, especially because I never attended an American high school. But what I can say about the German school system is that unfortunately, there are a lot of teachers who aren't very good at their jobs for different reasons. But one of those reasons is that most of them have the status of a civil servant, which means that they can't be fired. And I feel like if you're not a very good teacher, students often don't respect you as much. But I can just talk about that more when I make the video on education differences. Are the German accents in movies and TV overdone? In a lot of cases, yes. In like high quality movies, um, they're usually pretty accurate, I would say. I mean, whenever it's a Nazi movie, they're gonna do the Nazi accent, which is not what modern Germans would sound like, but it's still accurate for the time. But especially with comedy and TV shows, there are a lot of German accents that just sound super weird to me. Not just overdone, but actually wrong. Like you can tell that the actors aren't German. It is something that happens instantaneously. It courses through you like the water of a river after a storm, filling you and emptying you all at once. A uh, Rolf's brother, Hermann. Hermann the German. You must get that all the time. No, first time. Let's hope it catches on. <laughs> a real German accent would sound like this if you overdo it a lot, or like this if you take it down a notch. Have you encountered any English dialects, Southern, New England, etc., or even Kentucky or the Cleveland A, since being here in Cincinnati? What's it like to live in a place like Germany that is surrounded by foreign languages so nearby? Do most Germans travel and get exposed to them or stay closer because of it? Okay, a lot of questions, so I'll answer them one after another. Yes, I've been exposed to different American English accents, of course. For one, I've traveled a lot within the US, but there's also just a lot of people here in Cincinnati that grew up in different places and therefore have different accents. I have to say though that as a non-native speaker, it's often a lot harder to recognize those differences because in a lot of cases, they're really subtle. I am familiar with the Cleveland A because I had two roommates from Cleveland when I first moved here, but other than that, I'd say that the southern accent and the African-American vernacular English dialect are probably the ones that I've experienced the most. And depending on how strongly those are spoken, it can be really difficult for me to understand everything. Overall though, I'd say that I'm pretty used to being exposed to different dialects and accents because in Germany we actually have a lot of those. We actually have more dialects and accents in Germany than you guys have here in the US, even though Germany is a much smaller country, but it also has a lot more history, so it makes Sense. Regarding the foreign languages around Germany, that's actually pretty normal for Europeans to be surrounded by other languages and cultures. I mean, you really only need to drive for a few hours and then you're in a completely different country with a whole different language where you don't understand a word maybe if you don't speak it, and it also looks different. And yes, Germans travel a lot actually. Full-time employees have a minimum of 24 days of paid time off and more than one third of all Germans travels at least once a year. In 2009, it was even two-thirds of all Germans who went on at least one trip. And someone else had a related question to this. Where do Germans go for vacation? In country and out of country? So I looked it up and the most popular travel destination for Germans is actually Germany. And within Germany, people like to do city trips like to Hamburg, Munich, Berlin, Cologne, etc. But then also going to the Alps is popular and to other mountains and going to the German coasts, to the German and the Baltic Sea. Outside of Germany, the most popular travel destination is Spain and within Spain the most popular spot is Mallorca and if you've never heard about Germans on Mallorca you should definitely look it up. There is a part of the island called Balaman and during the summer you'll actually hear more German there than you'll hear Spanish and there are some German singers who have their own clubs there where they perform every single night during the summer so it's pretty crazy. After Spain popular travel destinations are and I wrote this down Italy, the US, Scandinavia, Greece, the Caribbean, Australia and New Zealand, France, Austria, Turkey, Croatia and 
many more, of course. So from that list, it's pretty obvious that Germans like to travel to warm places because our summers are not very reliable and a lot of us really crave that beach vacation. We just like want beach and the ocean and just relaxing and tanning. So we have to go somewhere else for that because we don't really get that in Germany a lot. But also it seems like Germans prefer to travel further away because only two of our neighboring countries were on that list that I just read to you. I had an observation from my last trip to Germany and I wanted your insights. I rented a car at Frankfurt airport and drove in Belgium, France, Switzerland, Austria and of course many kilometers in Germany. Unlike the other countries, I felt pressured by other drivers in Germany to drive faster even if I was already driving the posted speed. Invariably, I would find someone planted on my bumper. From the Autobahn all the way down to tiny rural roads and town streets. This obviously was unnerving and surprised me in a country I thought was so compliant with rules and regulations. Do you have any idea why? Or was I just overreacting? You're not overreacting at all. Germans really do that a lot and it drives me crazy too. I personally love how relaxed driving in the US is compared to Germany. I don't really know what it is with the Germans, but we always seem to be in a hurry. Not only when driving, you can also observe this by the speed that people walk in and how impatient we are when we have to wait in line at the store. But Germans just like to use their time very efficiently and we're definitely not known for being very relaxed people. Now back to driving, I usually compare driving in Germany to driving in big US cities like New York City or Chicago or something like that because it can be really stressful. And on top of that there is some weird pride thing going on when it comes to Germans and driving and I'm saying weird because I personally don't have that but a lot of Germans do. I think this partly has to do with how proud we are of our German cars and that's even still understandable to a certain extent but a lot of Germans also seem to think that the faster you drive, the bigger your balls are. And yes, I'm probably provoking a lot of people by saying that, but I mean, it doesn't really take a genius to see that feeling superior just because you're driving extremely fast is pretty short-sighted. And yes, Germans usually do love their rules, but for some reason when it comes to cars and driving, a lot of them suddenly seem to have a totally different mindset. I mean, it's not like all Germans drive over the speed limit all the time, I would even say most Germans don't do that. Most Germans do comply to the rules and drive the speed limit or a little bit over the speed limit, but we definitely do tend to drive more aggressively than what you would see on the streets in the Midwest, for example. And on that note, regarding the whole pride thing, as many of you probably know, Germany is the only country in the world with highways with no speed limit, which means that you can drive as fast as you want. And recently there have been attempts to get rid of that. And a lot of Germans are strongly against that because they feel like it's part of their freedom and it's their right to drive as fast as they want. And this leads me to the next question. What's it like to drive on the Autobahn in Germany? Okay, so let's back up a little bit here and let me explain the basics first. The Autobahn is not just one road somewhere in Germany that doesn't have a speed limit, which seems to be a common misconception. Autobahn is what the German highway system is called. So Autobahn translates to highway or interstate. And for the most part, there are speed limits of 120 kilometers per hour, which is about 75 miles per hour. Most of them have two to four lanes and other than on US highways and interstates, it's illegal to pass on the right side on the Autobahn. So if you drive on a three lane Autobahn, this is what it's going to be like. The right lane is going to be full of trucks, except for Sundays because they're banned on that day. So that's always a nice day to do longer drives. The middle lane is going to be full of people going the speed limit or a little bit over the speed limit. And if there is none, they're going to go 130, 140 kilometers per hour and the left lane is the passing lane where people literally go anywhere from 130 kilometers per hour to like 220 kilometers per hour which is about 125 miles per hour or even faster. Some people go up to 300 kilometers per hour which is about 186 miles per hour so pretty insane. So it depends on how much traffic there is of course but driving on the Autobahn in my experience often means switching lanes a lot and always looking out for people coming up behind you, just like it was mentioned in the previous comment. So let's say you're on the Autobahn, there's no speed limit right now, you're driving in the middle lane, but you wanna go faster than 130 kilometers per hour. So you switch to the left lane, which means you really have to speed up. And before you know it, you see like a little point in the rear mirror, like an Audi driving
driving up with 220 kilometers per hour and boom one second later he's right behind you pressuring you to find a spot in the middle lane to let him pass and once you do switch over to the middle lane again he speeds up as fast as he can and whoosh he's gone and then you can do the whole spiel all over again because the middle lane is still too slow for you and you don't want to go that speed oh and sometimes people are even so rude that they flash you from behind to let you know that they want to pass of course this was a little exaggerated it's not always that bad especially when there's no traffic it can be really fun and of course it's not always Audi drivers but overall I just personally find driving on the German Autobahn a lot more stressful than driving in the US and it definitely requires a lot of concentration. Now there was another question about driving laws in Germany and getting a driver's license but I saved that one for the next Q&A so we can get back to that topic next week. Do most Germans have blonde hair and blue eyes? I'm not even sure if this is a serious question, but no, we don't. It's hard to find reliable numbers on this, but it seems like only about 10 to 20% of all Germans are naturally blonde nowadays. A region where it's actually the majority of people who have blonde hair is Scandinavia. And even within Germany, the more you go up north, the more blonde people you'll see. But most Germans actually have brown hair from what I found. And the majority of Germans have brown eyes too. Again, I couldn't find any reliable numbers on this but I did find that brown is the most common color of eyes in Germany and I would say that from my personal experience out of like 10 Germans that I know I would say that like maybe three or four of them have blue eyes but I'm from the south of Germany so I'm assuming that if I were from the north it would probably be more people blue eyes are definitely more common in Germany than they are in the world overall but if you thought that I didn't look like a typical German because I don't have blonde hair and blue eyes I have to disappoint you I actually do look like a typical German because most Germans have brown hair and don't have blue eyes so sorry. What part or parts of German culture would you like to see adopted in the USA? I think the biggest thing is that I would love for Americans to be a little less afraid of confrontation sometimes. I've talked about this before in my video on small talk, but Americans tend to be very polite people, which is awesome for the most part and something that I wish Germans would adopt. But in a lot of cases, politeness seems to be even more important than honesty. And that's something that I don't always appreciate all that much. Like a lot of Americans are raised with the idea that the most important thing in social interactions is making the other person feel good and they'll exaggerate um, make polite excuses use little white lies and those kind of things to accomplish that germans are sometimes almost the opposite of that we're not overly friendly in most situations and usually i would say that honesty is more important to us than politeness so germans overall aren't really afraid of confrontation and we have a pretty strong culture of discussion too and i think that's sometimes something that i wish Americans could adopt a little because in certain situations I personally think that being honest would be better for all people involved and I'd even consider it more polite sometimes and helpful in the long run than making the other person feel good for that brief moment but basically leaving them in the dark about what you really think this can apply to work situations but also with friends or when it comes to dating I'm actually pretty sure that this fear of confrontation is one of the reasons why ghosting without an explanation is much more common in the US than it is in Germany okay so that was kind of a serious note to end on but overall I love how friendly Americans are and if you've watched my videos before you've probably picked up on that so that was it for today but again I'll answer more ask a German questions next week I really hope you guys enjoyed this video if you did don't forget to give it a thumbs up subscribe to my channel for free if you like what I do on here activate the bell to get new upload notifications follow me on Instagram and of course stay safe and healthy everyone and I hope I'll see you next time. Tschüss!